untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a colorless artifact combo deck, also referred to as Eggs, whose goal it is to cast a whole bunch of spells in the same turn, incrementally gaining life with Aetherflux Reservoir until we can pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to the opponent. And we can do so thanks to a bunch of new additions from the retro artifacts from the Brothers War, starting with Semblance Anvil, 3-mana artifact. When it enters the battlefield, we may exile a non-land card from our hand, and then spells we cast that share a card type with the exiled card cost two generic mana less to cast. So if we exile an artifact from our hand, we can now cast our artifacts at a two mana discount, which includes a lot of cards we can now play for free. Cards like the Elsewhere Flask, which draws a card when it enters. There's a Golden Egg, which will also draw right away. And then Mindstone will essentially ramp us if we can play it for free, as it can tap for a colorless and can later also be sacrificed to draw a card. And then we have a bit of built-in redundancy. Besides Anvil, we have four copies of Cloud Key, which does not require us to exile a card, but only gives us a one-mana discount on artifacts if we choose that. And then four copies of Sculpting Steel, which can enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield, including artifacts from the opponent. I'm playing this over Phyrexian Metamorph, so we don't have to pay the two life to the Phyrexian mana cost. Otherwise, Metamorph has the advantage of also copying opposing creatures, but doesn't come up very often. So Sculpting Steel can copy Cloud Key and Semblance Anvil, eventually maybe also copy Aetherflux Reservoir to speed things up. But the main goal here is to get a total mana discount of 4 in play, because then we can cast all the artifacts in our deck for free, including Aetherflux Reservoir and, more importantly, Mystic Forge, which lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time and cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of our library. So if we have a 4 mana discount plus a Mystic Forge in play, we can often cast the entire deck in one big turn, especially since if we hit a Lance Pocket, which is the only type of card we won't be able to play at that point, we can still tap Mystic Forge, pay one life, exile the top card of our library to see the next card. And we have additional card draw built in thanks to Scrap Trawler as well. A 3-2 says when Scrap Trawler or another artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to our hand target artifact card in our graveyard with a lesser mana value. So we can play Chromatic Sphere and Chromatic Star early in the game, which are just cheap artifacts that we can later sacrifice. The turn we sacrifice them, they are mana neutral, since they'll add one mana of any color, and they'll draw a card once they're put into the graveyard or sacrificed. Slightly different wording, Star also draws a card if the opponent were to destroy it, for instance. And then once we have Sphere and Star in the graveyard, we can later maybe sacrifice a card like Golden Egg, Elsewhere Flask, or Mindstone, which will then get back or various one-mana artifacts if we have a Scrap Trawler in play. So that can set up a very nice card draw engine as well. And that's the reason why I'm playing Flask, which can be sacrificed at any point. And then the fact that it changes our basic land types doesn't really matter. We just want an artifact that we can play and sacrifice without any issues. And Golden Egg can be sacrificed for one mana to add one mana of any color so that's also mana neutral and then Mindstone can also be sacrificed to draw a card so that can also set up some fun interactions with Scrap Trawler and then the goal is to eventually find a Mystic Forge which will make it much easier to keep comboing off also requires fewer clicks which is always appreciated and the more copies of Scrap Trawler in play, the better, since now we can maybe get back multiple of our one-mana artifacts once we sacrifice a two-mana artifact. If the opponent kills Scrap Trawler, we can also get back a two-drop, so that sets up a very nice value chain, even if the opponent has a lot of interaction available. We could also play Sleeper Dart at 2 mana, which has the additional utility of maybe keeping an opposing creature tap down. The only awkward part is that we won't be able to sacrifice it until there's a creature in play, and otherwise we might be forced to target our own Scrap Trawler, which then won't be able to untap. Usually not a big deal, but sometimes we want to use Scrap Trawler to pressure opposing Planeswalkers, and then it could be a bit of a drawback. Flask also has the utility of helping us cast a Gigantha, which we're playing as companion here. No real drawback. Don't plan to cast Gigantha very often, but it can come up in grindier matchups, and then having a 5-5 to cast without too much issue thanks to Flask, Egg, and the various 1-mana fixers is nice, because our entire mana base, except for one basic mountain, here in case of opposing copies of Boseju or Field of Ruin, is made up of these colorless lands, which offer a nice bit of utility. Void times 4 as well as Crystal Grotto from Dominaria United let us scry 1 when they enter the battlefield, otherwise they're just nice untapped lands that function 
function as they should. So these can help us smooth out our draws early on to help us find a second and third land because we are playing a very low land count, only 18 lands total. And that's because we don't want to have a ton of lands once we have a Mystic Forge in play because that's the way we can potentially brick and hit a land pocket which won't let us combo through the rest of our deck. So it's important that we keep the land count as low as possible but we do still need to hit our first couple land drops so the scry there is useful and then once we have a Mystic Forge in play we can also use the scry to potentially put lands back on the bottom of our deck so we can keep hitting more artifacts to keep going. Then we also have two copies of Buried Ruin to maybe sacrifice and get back an artifact from our graveyard so that can be useful if our opponent finds a way to destroy the reservoir or maybe a Mystic Forge. Then we also have some life gain built in against the aggressive decks, four copies of Radiant Fountain to gain two when it enters, as well as two copies of the Crypt of the Eternals, which will gain one when it enters. And then an Inventor's Fair can also maybe gain one life if we have enough artifacts in play, although it doesn't come up very often. Can also use it as a tutor later in the game to maybe help find a Mystic Forge or Reservoir to close out the game. And then as we mentioned, one basic in case we need to search it up. Could also be playing with a desert, which deals one damage to an opposing player or planeswalker more importantly. Can be a useful way to finish off a Narset or a Teferi that's left on one loyalty. Narset especially, preventing us from drawing extra cards, can be quite backbreaking if it stays in play. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Don't love this hand. A reservoir in our openers, usually not great. And then we don't have a two-mana artifact to go with Trawler and Sphere. And then Cloud Key instead of Anvil, so let's take a mulligan. This is a little bit better. We're missing the cost reducer, but we have Trawler and then one drops plus Mindstone. And one of them can probably go, maybe keep Sculpting Steel to double up on either Mindstone or Scrap Trawler. Put in blue-white. So for now, let's just gain some life. Make that maybe a reanimator deck. And if our opponent can get the uh, angel in play and give protection from artifacts, it's going to be pretty difficult for us to win. So hopefully we'll avoid that. We can scry now and hopefully keep something exciting on top to draw. Just play Mindstone, and then I guess I'll wait on Sacrificing. Even though I could have drawn into another 1-drop to then play afterwards. Possible our opponent has ways to mess with our graveyard, let's say an Ashiok. And then I would prefer not to put the star in graveyard yet, so we're more likely to get value of Scrap Trawler. Okay, Mystic Forge. So could just play a Mystic Forge right now. That seems fine. And then hope to find a cost reducer soon. And sure, we'll just pass here. Opponent has an Elish Norn in the graveyard. That one is not particularly threatening in the matchup, but a Mending could change that. Okay, just two sweepers. Those aren't very good against us. And a Celestus. Okay, so we're lucky with the reanimation targets our opponents found so far. Although we haven't found a cost reducer yet, so... I think I do activate Mystic Forge since I probably don't need another Scrap Trawler. And a Mystic Forge on top. So, can get rid of that one as well. Golden Eggs, not too useful. But I can play it off the top at least. Draw lands, that can scry, and there's a cloud key. That's good. So let us just play a normal land since I don't want to scry. Play cloud key on artifact, and there's an anvil coming up. So pretty sure we can win next turn. So can our opponent put an angel in play and give protection from artifacts? That's the question. Manding's going to go looking for one. And they've got the Priest already in play, ready to reanimate. Just two lands discarded. They can flash back Mending once again. It's going to be a Thought Seize, that's fine. Important cards are on the top of our deck. Takes a Scrap Trawler, makes sense. And Mending flash back. Discarding a land and another Mending. 
I think we're in the clear here. Take our draw step. Yeah, I think we'll preserve as much mana as possible. And we'll pitch a Sculpting Steel. And then start playing stuff for free. And Sculpting Steel can copy key here. So we don't have to pitch anything else. And that should be game. Just keep playing stuff for free while we can. At some point we'll hit a land pocket and then we can start drawing with our scrap trawler and various artifacts. Also have Mystic Forge we can activate. Still haven't played land for the turn, which can also scry. So we're unlikely to brick out completely here. Scrying to the bottom. Another land, so now we'll start drawing with our one drops. And we're already at 60 life, so that should do it. Although we could easily draw our entire library at this point. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this hand seems keepable. Mindstone into Cloud Key at the very least. Can scry towards another land or cost reducer chromatic sphere. I guess I can play with Mindstone. So it seems free enough. Since we might find a scrap trawler at some point to synergize with it. Up against some monorats, it's gonna be a pure race. Finding some lands to gain life would also be helpful. Mystic Forge we already have. So stone into sphere. And then sphere will give us a redraw next turn. Turn to Steamkin, okay. With a counter, so could already generate mana a little bit sooner. And uh, start by drawing with a sphere. A land is good, can gain one life. Could play Mystic Forge, I think I prefer Cloud Key into Golden Egg here. And then next turn we can play two mana key. And Sculpting Steel to copy it, so we'll be able to play one of those for very cheap. And then with triple key, one mana forge, flask for the redraw, and we can start playing off the top of our deck. But let's see what opponent can do here. Firebrands into another Kumano, Steam King can make three. So we could even see a Torbrain on turn three here, but just an attack. And second main Steam King for Annex. Uh oh, if there's an Ember Cleave, we could be dead next turn. And another Kumano. So we probably don't get another turn, so we better make it count. And step one, key number two. Then Sculpting Steel to copy key. And then I think I'll keep this Cryland in hand for now, play Mystic Forge. And start playing off the top as much as possible until we hit a land, in which case we can flask. Okay, one mana reservoir. So I guess what we can do is go full control and then in response to the scry draw with a star. Since I don't think the one life is going to matter. And then I still get to scry and... Mystic Forge I can put to the bottom. Flask is good, so play Reservoir. And hopefully keep going for a while. And the life could be enough to potentially survive an attack next turn. 226. Another Flask, excellent. Star is a redraw. Although I guess we don't have the mana to sacrifice it at the moment, so I'll have to use Forge. Mindstone, perfect, so that can sacrifice Star. Can copy Reservoir, and we're in the clear. Okay. Oof, close one here. Turn 4 against Monorat, but they definitely would have been able to kill us on turn 4 as well. 
on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, up against the Gigantha, so it could be Blue Red Wizards. Our hand is good, not great. Could use another cost reducer. A third line, of course, will be a welcome addition as well. Okay, for now I'll gain life, wait on the scry until next turn, once we have a bit more info. And our opponent does seem to be on Wizards. So the life gain helps. Just need to buy ourselves time. Belmore turn 2 is scary. So let's cry now. Look for lands, Sculpting Steel. Would have been nice to copy Cloud Key. I don't think I can keep it though. So we'll cycle Star. And then we'll see if we want to play more 1-drops or a 2-drop. If I play Sphere, I can cycle it. And then still play another Sphere. It's probably better. Okay, found a lane, that's good. So next turn, can play Cloud Key. And we're pretty happy if our opponent spends resources drawing cards as opposed to adding more threats to the board. Even though card draw will eventually result in extra threats. A reservoir, so stick to the plan. Play Cloud Key. And I probably don't need to sacrifice a star right away, but we can do so next turn. Not expecting too much artifact removal, unless the wizard's deck has adapted in the meantime. With maybe Goblin Charbelcher also rising in popularity, I wouldn't be surprised to see an Abrade. Or maybe the uh, Prismari command. Okay, so can start with Scrap Trawler to eventually get back some 1-drops, or we can Mystic Forge first. And a Fountain on top, so... can draw with Star. Play that for free. Another Cloud Key is excellent for next turn. Okay. And another one I'll take, so no need to use Mystic Forge. And we should be in a pretty good position to combo off on turn 5. And our opponent's been struggling to hit their land drops with Expressive Iteration. So we've been pretty lucky in that regard. There's Arcanists, but uh, might be too little too late. Okay, let's have some fun here. Cloud Key into Cloud Key. And then how about a Reservoir for one mana before we cast more stuff? And then Scrap Trawler with all these artifacts should help us draw through the remaining portion of our deck. Can play Anvil without pitching anything. One mana Mystic Forge seems fine, since we have double Mind Stone to make more mana. And we're already at 50 life, so didn't even need Scrap Trawler. Okay, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is not particularly exciting, just have a Cloud Key to discount our artifacts. But we do get to see quite a few cards in the meantime. I think we can do better. Probably would have kept if we had Anvil instead of Cloud Key. This at least has double Mind Stone for ramp. So we'll try it and then Golden Egg can go. Definitely situations where Golden Egg can gain life, which is helpful. But uh, I've been liking Flask more. Definitely keep Anvil on top. Just because Flask we can sacrifice once we're tapped out of mana to still maybe loop back some 1-drops if we have a Scrap Trawler out. Wouldn't mind an extra lands. Golden Egg should be good too once we play Anvil up against Mono Red, so... They shouldn't have much interaction for the artifacts. And then I'll probably pitch a Mind Stone to Anvil. 
opponent goes upstairs with the Wizard's Lightning. Glad they're not playing another creature first double lightning. Okay, so we're 11. And let's get this party started. Now I guess the upside of keeping Mindstone is that it lets us play key, so maybe I do pitch flask and keep the egg, and then we'll be able to play a ton of cards for free now. Perfect. Wouldn't be able to play a Reservoir this turn, but next turn for a measly one mana. And then we just want to string together more eggs, basically. Can sacrifice Mindstone for a redraw. Golden Egg can gain three life if needed. And then our best draw would be a Mystic Forge, I think. Play a Reservoir before Sphere to gain some life. And draw with that. And string as many of these together as we can. And yeah, Golden Egg, just uh, drawing a card as well as being able to gain three is not something you want to see as the burn player. And our opponent already concedes. Yeah, the Reservoir just putting us out of burn range. On to the next one. Okay, this hand seems pretty good. Anvil and then Trawler has both Mindstone and Chromatic Star to go with it. I'll wait on this cry. Up against turn one Mountain, so an aggro deck one might think. Turn to iteration. Could also be a more controlling strategy. Although wizards still seems likely, even without companion. Souls cry, wouldn't mind a third land. A mindstone, I guess, isn't bad since I can play it for free once I play Anvil after playing another Mindstone here. And then I'll just play Mindstone and pass. Can wait on sacking Chromatic Star for what it's worth. And then can probably pitch one Scrap Trawler to Semblance Anvil. Ooh, opponent does have the Prismari command. That's too bad. But uh, at least they didn't destroy our Anvil with it. So how does that change the game? Just have to play another Mindstone next turn. I guess I'll draw. Since if I draw a land after the Mindstone, I can still play Anvil. Sculpting Steel instead. Alright, let's try again. At least with Triple Scrap Trawler we can play a grindier game against a control strategy. If that's what we're up against. Mizzix's Mastery on Prismari Command, and yeah, it looks like our opponent's a Dragon Reanimator deck here. Can take out Mindstone once again. So that's no fun. And probably a Dragonstorm deck, if I had to guess. At least no Dragonstorm in the graveyard for future masteries. Okay, let's hope to pick up some lands now. Perfect. And I'll keep another one on top. Okay, so next turn we can play Anvil, and then maybe Sculpting Steel to copy Anvil so we can cast everything for free. And then free Scrap Trawler, can sack Egg to get back our uh, Chromatic Star, and keep going. Opponent in the meantime with Otherworldly Gaze, milling another Blade Wing. And they're looking for Mastery plus Dragonstorm here, no doubt. Soul Guide Lantern is effective, that shuts down our Scrap Trawler Avenue. So all the more reason to pitch them to Anvil. 
Okay, I'll start here. I guess I can play a land first in case of Jory disruption. And then I might want to play a Golden Egg first. Um, just to make use of the discount from Anvil. As opposed to playing Steel and have the opponent kill Anvil with another Prismari command. Yeah, they have another Prismari command. That's the third one. That's an issue. Get a redraw. And yeah, we'll pass. So our opponent's got all the angles covered here with the Soul Guide Lantern as well. Can maybe force them to use it. Although now without the one mana artifact, we don't have anything to get back immediately. Okay, so is it time for Scrap Trawler? I guess so. Still have Buried Ruin as well, which could get back Anvil, but not in the face of Soul Guide Lantern. So your opponent has double blade wing and terror of the peaks in the graveyard. Still no dragon storm at least. And there's another semblance anvil. Going flashing back gaze. And there's double dragon storm to hit the graveyard. So if they have a mystic mastery, we should be dead. A lantern sacrificed. And there it is. Mastery, get back Dragonstorm, which should have a Blade Wing left over. And then they can loop Terror of the Peaks. All right, never mind. Opponents, I guess, milled every copy of Blade Wing, so they were unable to search one up. So they can't actually combo off all the way. That's why we stick around to find out. So let's cry first, see what's on top, and hope for. A Mystic Forge, pretty much. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, I guess they just milled too many of their key combo pieces. And we had a pretty good chance of comboing in the near future. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not great. No Semblance Anvil, no Cloud Key. Just Sphere into Mindstone and Steel to maybe copy Mindstone. Not a whole lot of card draw. Let's take a mulligan. This is a little bit better. And then I can probably afford to put one land on the bottom. Let's make it Inventor's Fair. Rarely actually gain life with it. And then Steel can copy Cloud Key. Up against Blue Whites. And it looks like a Thopter deck. Okay, Scrap Trawler could be fun. So for now, land on top. Play Flask to draw it, and I'll hang on to my star for now. Although I'm probably going to sacrifice it next turn, so it's in the graveyard for Scrap Trawler plus Flask. Opponent's got Ornithopter, which can turn into a 4-4 Construct token. I guess the reason to sack star was if our opponent had a portable hole to exile it. Get to untap. Opponent could also have a Counterspell, Metallic Rebuke, for instance. So maybe we wait on Scrap Trawler, try Cloud Key, which they might also want to counter. Which one of the two is more relevant right now? Yeah, they're both equally important. I guess I will sacrifice Chromatic Star, see what we draw. And then sure, I'll go for a Cloud Key. And maybe get that countered. Mystic Forge is also nice. Now maybe with Mystic Forge I prefer resolving the Cloud Key over Scrap Trawler. So we'll get the Scrap Trawler countered. Because the mana discount with Mystic Forge is pretty important. And there's the Rebuke. Boone can still make a 4-4 end of turn. So we're going to be under a significant amount of pressure. And if the pressure is backed up by counter spells, that's a pretty deadly combination. Dark Steel Citadel can also maybe be animated with the uh, two mana aura, turning it into a 5 5. Nettle Cyst also applies a good bit of pressure. 
So we're taking four, but at least we get to resolve our cloud key. Into Chromatic Star. And then next turn maybe Sculpting Steel to copy Cloud Key. And then Mystic Forge can combo off. Another Citadel into Kiora. I guess Kiora can maybe let them use Foundry several times and a Portal Hole. Should go after a Chromatic Star. Goes for Flask, which I can sacrifice to leave it in the graveyard for what it's worth. Their opponent hits us for 10. So they are presenting lethal for next turn. And they could technically still have a metallic rebuke in hand, but not going to be able to beat it here. So let's see. Sculpting Steel for 2 mana. Sculpting Steel for 1 mana. And then I need to draw a land still as well. So I guess we can start by sacking Star. Okay, so step 1. And then I guess we can already play a flask if we'd like. Still need a land. There we go. And then we can scry. Bottom the land now. Play a sculpting steel on key. Play one mana forge. And then we gotta keep going here. Uh-oh, land on top. So, one last chance by using Forge. That's a key. And that's another land on top. So I think we're done here. Yeah, opponent was able to have just enough interaction and pressure here to set up lethal. Definitely would have been able to combo next turn with a fresh draw step and another Forge activation. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is missing some cheap eggs to go with this Crack Trawler, but I don't think I can turn down Anvil Double Cloud Key. And then as soon as we find some eggs, we can combo with this Crack Trawler. And we have some Scry Lands as well. So I can definitely put Lands on the bottom, another Crack Trawler can go as well. Up against Jeskai could be Control, in which case Second Trawler could still come in handy. There is a Mystic Forge. Okay, let's cry again. And a flask seems fine to keep. And then turn three, we'll see if we want to go for anvil or try cloud key first. Opponent's got the iteration. There's a chance your opponent has artifact removal. Or a counter spell here. So maybe test out the waters with a cloud key. Name artifacts and pass. And then next turn, anvil could be quite effective. Opponent with another iteration. So they're sculpting their hands. They might have some counter spells, maybe a Mystic's Mastery to get back Magma Opus. Okay, do we try Cloud Key first is a question. Yeah, sure. And then we can still Anvil afterwards. Name Artifact. So this now costs one mana. And uh, sure, we'll see if it resolves. It does. Pitch Golden Egg. And then I guess we'll play Trawler after playing a Flask so we have something in the graveyard if they kill it. Even though it would be better to keep Flask around until after we play Mystic Forge in case there's a land on top. But we did draw Buried Rune, so I guess that worked out. And then we're hoping they pull the trigger on a counter spell here instead of Mystic Forge. Okay, Syncopate for X equals 2, that works. And now the coast is clear for Mystic Forge. 
and we can activate to see the next card, also a land. Okay, hopefully there's no removal for Forge, otherwise we're in trouble. I guess Buried Ruin can get it back eventually. And with the mana discounts, we will be able to replay it right away. The fairy can tuck it instead. That's a better answer than destroying it here. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Don't have any way to manipulate the top of my deck. All the scry lands are gone. And I'm wishing this crypt were the desert to finish off the fairy instead. Can put a Gigantha in hand to try and cast it next turn. So yeah, we had the opportunity to fully combo off last turn, but we just hit a land pocket at an inopportune time. And our opponent certainly will have the shields back up for the next time we cast Forge. Although, again, we have the Buried Ruin, so that helps. Unless their counterspell exiles like Syncopate. Mastery for Magma Opus. So that can start applying pressure, so we don't have all day to combo kill our opponent, basically. At least we can play our companion. And another free cloud key, why not? Could have also named creature. In case of another syncopate, we would have had two left over. It's going to be a charm to counter instead. The fairy pluses. And we'll see how many times we get the opportunity to bring back Mystic Forge with Buried Ruin. Step one. Gear Hulk get back counterspell, but opponent will be tapped out afterwards. So I can still replay it. And then I guess we'll keep the second Buried Rune available, just in case. Okay, let's hope we can actually combo now. Land on top, activate Forge. Okay, let's go. Draw lands, play a Flask. Mind Stone's a redraw. Another Anvil, we'll just play without pitching anything. And I'll keep Buried Rune available. Okay, let's keep going. Cloud Key, can name Artifacts. Okay, so there's a land on top, we can scry that to the bottom. That's good. Okay, can we find a Scrap Trawler? For now, draw. Another sphere, sculpting steel to copy. What's the best we can do here? Another forge is probably just worse than a redraw. So I guess we'll copy golden egg. There's another forge. Okay, looks like we'll be able to get there. Place crap trawler, so that's more card draw. So it's just a matter of time before we find Aetherflux Reservoir. Okay, that was tough. Facing quite a few counter spells, and then the Teferi Minus was very effective. But uh, I think we figured a way to win here thanks to Buried Rune. And as I pointed out, if you want a better matchup against control decks, you can replace Crypt of the Eternals with the deserts, and then that's a way to maybe finish off a One Loyalty Narset or Teferi. And we're at 64, so that should do it. GG's. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems to have most of the pieces we need. Can copy anvil with sculpting steel. And uh, just need to hit our third land drop. Star can help with that. Well, let's see what we're up against. Blue reds, wizards. Okay, let's uh, see what we can find. Mindstone would be ideal. Instead, we'll scry. And a golden egg. Seems fine. Gives us a two drop in case we find a scrap trawler. So the next turn the plan is could play anvil pitching one sculpting steel. Double sage, is there a reckless charge? Nope, channeler. Okay, so no damage for now. Yeah, I think we'll start with an anvil pitching sculpting steel. And I think I hang on to the golden egg in case we don't find another artifact to pitch. Opponent could certainly kill us over the course of two turns here. Triggers Channeler does not trigger Symmetry Sage. And then they'll be able to cast a free Expressive Iteration. Okay. So they're going to hit us for at least seven. So we might still have two turns. Although with double Anvil, there's a good chance we can already combo next turn. They've already played Land for the turn, so it's just going to be an opt. Okay, so far so good. Just got to hope our top decks are kind to us. And we don't hit a Land Pocket. Another Forge will also help. Um, I guess I'm better off pitching a Forge as opposed to a Golden Egg, since Forge just costs us one life to refresh the top of our deck. And I don't expect this game to go much longer. Another Forge. Sculpting Steel copies Forge at this point. Alright, we're unlikely to completely brick. Scryland also gives us an extra look at the top of our deck. And then we'll copy Golden Egg at this point. Cloud Key can name Artifact, but we already have the maximum discount. And there's Crab Trawler. And we have a Chromatic Star in the graveyard, so that's great. And always fun to play all the spells of the top for free. Can scry with Void if we'd like. Triple Scrap Trawler, and now we have multiple one mana artifacts to sacrifice if needed. And this already gonna gain us quite a bit of life. And there we have it. Okay. Turn 4 kill against Blue Red Wizards. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has the cost reducers, missing a card draw engine. But I'll give it a try. Should be able to find a second land with a scry here and a redraw from Star. And then Mindstone into Anvil. Opponents with turn 1 Shepherd, so Mono Green Elves, a scary matchup, although at least they didn't have a Mana Elf on one. So play Mindstone and pass. Could also, like, sacrifice Star right now if we'd like, in case we find another 1 drop, but Anvil would let us play it for free anyway. So yeah, next turn Anvil, play free Mindstone, which adds 1 mana. Still missing our card draw effect to really go over the top. Sculpting Steel can copy Anvil if we'd like, although that means pitching another card. What do I pitch to the first Anvil is also an interesting question. 
Maybe it's just Reservoir, since it is fun to gain some life, but Elf deck can go over the top, so gaining like 10 is probably not even going to make a difference. And we have another one to combo with. So Flask for the redraw might be okay. And see what else we're working with. A lands can play that as Cry. And another Flask on top, I guess is a free redraw. And then, yeah, I guess we can Sculpting Steel, Copy Anvil, Pitching Key, and then we've got the maximum discount already. And then we can start sacrificing Mindstone if we miss on our next draw step. There's Marwyn, okay. We'll immediately pick up an extra counter from an Elf token. And take three. So we probably have two more turns at most. Start with Flask. Okay, got to full playset. And there's a Scrap Trawler, perfect. So that should pretty much do it here with Flask bringing back Chromatic Star. That's a ton of extra draw steps until we find our next card draw engine, basically. And I guess the scry doesn't hurt. Mindstones, another redraw. So sure, I guess we'll keep it on top. So sack flask. Get back star. Play star. Draw mindstone. Sack flask. Pick up star. And if we find a second scrap trawler, I guess we still only have the one thing to get back. And there we have a second, so now a second scrap trawler would actually help. Already played land for the turn. So final flask, but we still have triple mindstone. Can't quite play Gigantha here since we only have discount for artifacts. Another Mindstone. So draw two cards basically since we'll be drawing from Mindstone and getting back a Sphere or Star. And there's another Scrap Trawler. Okay, so now we get to double up on those effects. So not as quick and efficient as just having the uh, Mystic Forge in play, but it also works and gives the deck more redundancy. Okay, we would like to find some more action here. Cloud Key. Could name Creature at this point. And there's another Anvil. Doesn't do much for us. Sculpting Steel can copy Scrap Trawler. Although it awkwardly auto tapped my Mindstone instead of my land. So we're actually out of place now. That's unfortunate. But triple Scrap Trawler as blockers means we're unlikely to die this turn. And then next turn Mindstone gets back three one mana cards and we should be able to keep going. And then still plenty of cards on library, so I'm not concerned about not having enough spells to kill with Aetherflux Reservoir. Since we only have one left in the deck after exiling the other. Marwyn 7-7, seven, seven. okay. That can make a lot of mana. I guess if our opponent's playing something like a Crater Hoof Behemoth, we could have been in trouble. Elvish Archdruid instead, so definitely not getting a turn after this one. 
Lenor Elves gets to draw. Sentinel. Yep. I wonder if they were better off just activating the uh, Shepherd's ability instead of casting more creatures afterwards. And our opponent's just going to hit for four. Is there any benefit to chumping with a Scrap Trawler? Maybe there is, since I would get back a bunch of two drops. That's probably more draws as opposed to keeping things as is. Yeah, since we get multiple uh, Scrap Trawler triggers, think Flask is better than Mindstone. Okay, so we shouldn't be able to brick now. Okay, there's a Mystic Forge that'll help. And then hope that uh, Reservoir's not my bottom card, although we can scry some bad cards to the bottom to make sure that's not the case. Okay, so let's draw with Flask. I guess maybe play my scry land now keep spells until after we find Reservoir. Okay, I guess I can activate Forge. Alright, there we go. Took us long enough. So, Sculpting Steel, Copy Reservoir. And then it should be just a handful of spells to get to 50. Well, we were lucky to be on the play, otherwise Elf Deck definitely would have killed us. So that's also important in a format as fast as Historic. There we have it. So yeah, this Artifact Eggs combo deck is incredibly effective if you've got uh, explosive draw with semblance anvil especially i've been able to kill as early as turn three with turn two mindstone turn three double anvil and then mystic forge to combo off can also get there with like anvil double cloud key so multiple avenues to victory and having both scrap trawler and mystic forge as your card draw engines also adds a bit of redundancy so you're not reliant on drawing a four off so yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.